let's get to the first story of today. Jack Teixeira is appearing in U.S. court and he is charged over the Pentagon leaks. We're going to talk about that right now. The National Guard has just appeared in court in Boston to face espionage charges over a huge leak of secret government documents. Jack Teixeira, who is 21, was Tessera. arrested by FBI agents yesterday. The material reveals sensitive intelligence on topics including the war in Ukraine. How do you think this compares to Trump and his dogs? Why are you advocating for people to be able to leak classified info in general? I mean, I want to know. I want to know what the military is saying versus uh, what the military is actually doing. Don't you? I pay for it. Like, I think that there is some criminal components here, just not the ones that, like, the media or... Uh, or the government is uh, focusing on. For example, when you leak information like this on a Discord server and it's like completely unvetted by a journalist or a third party that can like hide certain uh, uh, key parts of the information, you can potentially put innocent civilians at risk, right? Um, I think that there is a reality to that. And um, that is something that could be punishable and should be punishable as a matter of fact. So... The way that the way that he leaked this information is uh, what makes it punishable because he's a fucking dumbass. But if it was like if he had done this by sending it to a fucking instead of a Discord server, sending it to a fucking journalist, ultimately that would be good. That that would be not a bad thing. That would be a good thing. I am always going to be an advocate for uh, leaking. Uh, information about the government to journalists. This is such a weird take, dude. This is a weird way of getting that info, though. Wanting to know where your money is spent is not the same as being okay with top secret info being leaked. Well, let me let me clarify further. As long as key elements that pertain to civilian safety are redacted, I'm always in favor of top secret information uh, uh, being leaked. How about that? Is that good? That's my opinion. I, I think America is a... Uh, warmongering international global superpower that is doing a lot of death and destruction all around the world. Our politicians lie about those actions. Our military lies about those actions. I would like to know what the truth is. Um, as long as it's not leaking private information that pertains to civilians, citizens, unrelated people that uh, could be put in harm's way as a consequence of that, then uh, I don't care. So uh, in my opinion, the main problem with the Discord leak overall is the way that it was done. And, and I guess the intent behind it uh, was so stupid. And the way that it was done was so fucking stupid that uh, there was nothing that was redacted. It was just like straight up uploaded uh, photos. Per criminal complaint filed in Massachusetts District Court, Jack Teixeira has been charged with unauthorized retention and transmission of national defense information, unauthorized removal and retention of classified material. Per affidavit filed by the FBI agent Patrick Lukenhoff of the Washington Field Office Counterintelligence Division states, images in Teixeira's leaks appear to depict documents used to inform senior military and civilian government officials during the briefings of the Pentagon. A user Teixeira server told <clears throat> a user Teixeira server told the FBI that Teixeira began posting what appeared to be classified information around December 2022. Oh my God, he was posting for so long. And photographs of documents around January, the affidavit states. The FBI affidavit cites a specific document mentioned by the user to describe the status of the Russia-Ukraine conflict and was based on sensitive U.S. intelligence. The user interviewed by the FBI said to Shara, told him he worried about being discovered taking notes on the classified documents at work. So he began taking the documents home and photographing them. <laughs> Oh, my God. Oh, my God. The user told the FBI... He just took it out, dude. That's awesome. The user told the FBI details about Jack gleaned from their conversations on Discord. User 1 also described to the FBI his interactions with the individual posting under the subject username. In the course of those interactions, user 1 learned that the individual posting under the subject username called himself Jack, appeared to reside, reside in Massachusetts, and claimed that he was in the United States Air National Guard. User 1 described that the individual posting under subject username is a white male who was clean-cut in appearance between 20 to 30 years old. And then they got uh, his name from Discord Records. Lol. Imagine thinking you're private on Discord. Lol. Okay. Uh, U.S. government logs show Teixeira accessed the Ukraine war document in February, one day before he posted to his friends on Discord. On Thursday, April 6th, logs shows 
uh, to share uses word computer to search classified intelligence for the word leak. The public reporting regarding the government information appeared on or around April 6, 2023. Accordingly, there is no reason to believe that Teixeira was searching for classified reporting regarding the U.S. intelligence community's assessment of the identity of the individual who transmitted classified national defense information, including to include the government document. The bigger question is, why would the United States government give anyone with a Discord account top secret clearance? Sounds like an automatic disqualification for me. I mean, there will be, like, really funny rule changes that don't actually address the major problem. Uh... But they they will probably have rule changes like that. Like, you're not even... That's not even a joke. Like, they probably will literally be like, yeah, going forward, if you have a Discord account, like, you can't. Like, that'll be a part of, like, uh, getting uh, your your level of, like, security clearance. No gamers. No War Thunder. Ukraine war. Leak shows Western special forces on the ground. That's crazy. Shocking. Shocking to me. According to the document dated 23rd of March, the UK is the largest contingent of special forces in Ukraine with 50, followed by fellow NATO states Latvia 17, France 15, the US 14, and the Netherlands 1. The document does not say where the forces are located or what they're doing. The number of personnel may be small and will doubtless uh, will doubtlessly fluctuate, but special forces are, by their very nature, highly effective. Their presence in Ukraine is likely to be seized upon by Moscow, which has in recent months argued that it is not just confronting Ukraine, but NATO as well. That's weird. What are they doing in Ukraine, you guys think? What do you guys think the, the NATO uh, forces are doing in Ukraine? I thought that that was like not Article 5. Hmm. So shocking to find that information out. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm sure they're just, uh, they're just hanging out. Probably the push for a ceasefire negotiations. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. In line with its standard policy on such matters, the UK Ministry of Defense has not commented, but on tweet on Tuesday said the leak of alleged classified information had demonstrated what it called a serious level of inaccuracy. Readers should be cautious about taking at face value allegations that have the potential to spread misinformation, it said. It did not elaborate or suggest which specific documents it was referring to. However, Pentagon officials are quoted as saying the documents are real. One document which detailed the number of casualties suffered in Ukraine on both sides did appear to have been doctored. UK special forces are made up of several elite military units with distinct areas of expertise and are regarded to be among the most capable in the world. 007 being one of them. That's right. The British government has a policy of not commenting on its special forces in contrast to other countries, including the United States. The UK has been vociferous in its support for Ukraine and is the second largest donor after the US military after the US of military aid to Kiev. Very nice. China agreed to secretly arm Russia leaked Pentagon documents reveal. Intercept of Russian intelligence shows Beijing wanted to disguise lethal aid as civilian items, says report. Bro, this is the most... Bro, this is the most America shit I've ever seen. That's crazy. <laughs> they, they're calling it China aid. <laughs> like US aid. They're calling it China AID. It's crazy. China approved the provision of lethal aid to Russia for its war in Ukraine, but wanted any shipments to remain a secret according to leaked US government documents. A top-secret intelligence summary dated 23rd of February states that Beijing had approved of incremental provisions of weapons to Moscow, which it would disguise as civilian items. The intelligence was gathered by U.S. agents eavesdropping on Russia's secret service discussions, the newspaper reported. You know what I think is more likely in this circumstance? I mean, maybe they are, but I would, ra I, I would believe more likely that, like, Russia leaked that to America to make it seem like China is more supportive of their efforts uh, in Ukraine than they actually are. Or they are directly giving, uh, uh, you know, aid and, and weapons. But it would be in Russia's interest to make it seem like they have more support from China than they actually do to make it seem like they have more, uh, more support on the international scale. This is where I find out whether or not people hate Russia more than China. Because chatters will be like, oh, dude, it's like you're defending China. I'm not. I think there, there's a very high likelihood that this is real and China is actually giving... Uh, or actually trying to funnel weapons uh, into Ukraine uh, for the Russians to use. But I feel like as far as who's to gain more from this uh, situation, 
It would be Russia that gains more from the situation to make it seem like China is actually on their side. China vows not to sell arms to any party in the Ukraine war. China won't sell weapons to either side of the war in Ukraine, the country's foreign minister said on Friday, responding to Western concerns that Beijing would provide military assistance to Russia. China has maintained that it is neutral in the conflict while backing Russia politically, rhetorically, and economically at a time when Western nations have imposed punishing sanctions and sought to isolate Moscow for its invasion of its neighbor. China will not provide weapons to relevant parties of the conflict and manage and control the export of dual-use items in accordance with laws and regulation. The minister also reiterated China's willingness to help find a peaceful resolution to the conflict. In February, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken said the U.S. had intelligence suggesting China was con uh, considering providing arms and ammunition for Russia and warned that such involvement in the Kremlin's war effort would be a serious problem. The White House on Friday welcomed Kin's pledge that China won't supply weapons to Russia, but expressed a measure of trepidation. As we've said all along, we don't believe it's in China's best interest to move in that direction. We will continue to monitor closely, White House National Security Council spokesman Adrian Watson said in a statement. Parler is shut down by new owner. A Twitter clone for conservatives is not a viable business. Deal comes after Kanye West made a failed bid for social network company last year. So we say bye-bye, bye-bye to Parler, okay? We are Truth Social fans in here. Everybody knows, like, Parler is a fake one. True Social is the real one. Also, why would you go to a right-wing media, like, social media platform when Twitter exists now? You know what I mean? A new search by conservative group takes woke alerts to the phones of grocery shoppers who want to know which brands are accused of taking political positions that are offensive to the right. You are so right. Everyone's a liberal now. 100%. Dude, it's funny because, like, conservatives are going to fucking actually lose so much goddamn weight. They're going to be skinny as fuck when they realize the the three conglomerates that own damn near the entirety of the fucking grocery chains and the grocery stores and the commodities that they consume on a daily basis have all done like pro-gay marketing. These motherfuckers are going to start eating air, dude. <laughs> it's going to be funny. I like this. I like this because it's like Basically, I, I can I can picture a world in which conservatives are checking one another like the fucking annoying, uh, annoying leftists do like where they're like, wow, I can't believe you consume this. I can't believe you went and you got Bud Light. That's really fucked up, sweaty. Do you know Bud Light is pro trains? That's right. How dare you do that? And then and then the other conservatives can be like, Hank, don't you understand? There's no ethical consumption under capitalism, brother. <laughs> like they don't give a fuck about like the the child slave labor practices or anything like that. They just like, they literally care about the ethical consumption for the conservative is like uh, whether or not the brand has said loosely that like they think gay people shouldn't be murdered or something. Uh, I, I've said this so many fucking times, it bears repeating. I don't know how to describe it, uh, but you know, these guys have become the SJWs. I mean, they have always been the SJWs, but they were able to like at least portray themselves as anything but that. And, and you know, now it's, it's becoming more and more obvious. The more unhinged they become, it becomes more obvious that they are, uh, you know, the, the very thing that they claimed that they weren't, even though they were the whole time. Cancel culture is seen as something that is like exclusively weaponized by the left. It's not the case at all. It has always historically been done by both sides, okay? And these guys get more and more freak-like every fucking day. It's kind of funny to see, though. It is funny to see. I don't know why there isn't enough commentary cut on how uh, the anti-SJWs are behaving exactly in the same ways uh, that the SJWs supposedly behaved in, like, 2016. Like, these guys claim they love free speech, but for them, free speech just means being able to say slurs. They literally are the number one advocates for censoring books. They have successfully been able to censor books in libraries, in schools. The entire advocacy towards CRT, critical race theory, was conducted by the right with the deliberate and express purpose of eradicating certain forms of education that talked about black history in this goddamn country. That is literally what they claim SJWs are doing. So you guys already know who Daniel Perry is, uh, a convicted murderer who uh, went to a Black Lives Matter protest, drove into a crowd, and he executed an Air Force veteran, Garrett Foster. And um, the trial was pretty unhinged. Ultimately, he was found guilty, okay? And now Tucker Carlson... And numerous other, like, far-right weirdos are trying to get Daniel Perry uh, to be pardoned by Texas Governor Greg Abbott. Texas Governor Greg Abbott basically said he was going to do that. 
uh, immediately. He's like, come on, bring it over to my desk. I'm going to pardon him immediately. Well, during that process, uh, more details came out. This is the document Judge Clifford Brown considered when looking at what to allow the jury to see during trial. In that document, the state mentions a Facebook post from Perry on June 1st, 2020 that says, quote, they also spread violence and hatred like the Black Panthers of the 60s. Black Lives Matter is racist to white people and think we should pay them money because we purchase them from black Africans in Africa. That same day, he also posted, you know, pretty basic stuff. I mean, a lot of people are throwing up huhs, but you hear this all the time. Any right wing circle, if you've ever observed it from afar, you've heard these takes. I mean, half the motherfuckers we ban in this chat come in here and say shit like that. You know what I mean? It's pretty boilerplate, open and shut, cut and dry, white supremacist racism that maybe even some of your uncles and some of your fucking grandfathers have expressed time and time again. It's so normal that you get blind to this kind of thing. You know what I mean? This is not like, this is literally what a lot of people say in private and in public when they're only around other white people usually posted on Facebook, quote, now it is my turn to get banned, but comparing Black Lives Matter's movement to a zoo full of monkeys that are freaking out, flinging their expletive. He also posted a comment on a YouTube video titled, protesters looters get shot San Antonio, Texas, saying, quote, glad someone finally did something. And the state also pointed to an online search Perry made where he typed, quote, Degrees of murder charges. Yeah, here, I'll give you some more, uh, you know, key details of the situation. Okay, you want to see how fucking, you want to see how fucked up this shit is? Here, let me show you. A lot of the racist messages are actually leaked. In addition to occasionally racist messages suggesting Daniel Perry, the man Governor Greg Abbott wants to pardon, was fantasizing about shooting protesters, there are some where he's chatting with underage youth. No nudes until you're old enough, Perry wrote in one message. Daniel Perry, who drove for Uber, admitted to killing a homeless man by accident, hitting a pedestrian with his car, and also said he'd been arrested for public intoxication but had to convince the officer not to get him on a DUI. Well, now he's going to also convince, uh, you know, Governor Greg Abbott not to give him a fucking murder charge. So that's cool. Daniel Perry also admitted during a police interrogation that the man he shot did not aim his rifle at Perry because Foster did not lift his rifle out of the low ready position, which had its safety on and didn't have a round in the chamber. Remember Daniel that. Perry's police. I mean, here, this is like the most damning piece of evidence, by the way, that he just like shot him for no fucking reason here. Detective Fugit had Perry demonstrate how Foster carried his rifle. How high did that barrel come up? We're not worried about right now. Okay, was it aimed at you? Yeah, that right there is the zinger. I didn't want to give him a chance to aim at me. That's it. Like, he openly admitted that the other dude wasn't even fucking aiming his rival at him. Okay? He was just scared, and he did a fucking accidental oopsie murder. Who amongst us hasn't done that? You know what I mean? Look at his search history. The normal night for Daniel Perry is just Googling good chats to meet young girls, followed by degrees of murder charges and attack on Jews in Texas. Here it is. A review of Daniel Perry's cell phone extraction revealed that on or about an unknown date in an unknown county in Texas, a possible search in safari for good chats to meet young girls. Uh, he also literally said, I might go to Dallas to shoot looters. Now, under normal circumstances, you look at a situation like this and you go, oh, like this is the ramblings of a schizophrenic madman. But in the United States of America, a nation that never actually solved or addressed its white supremacist underpinnings with routine white natalist uh, or white nativist, well, natalist too, white nativist uh, and uh, uh, white supremacist propaganda, okay? You look to that and you go, that's in some respects while also definitely a violent criminal, is a victim of that kind of propaganda. This doesn't happen on its own. Nobody is born and then immediately they start thinking like this. They are conditioned into thinking like this, okay? There are so many people who think like this because they watch Fox News, they watch Newsmax, they watch all the fucking right-wing media say exactly these words. Where do you think he came up with this idea? You think he, co he cooked it up in his own mind? No. His mind does not cook anything. He's got a Uber Eats, a single thought. 
Yeah, I mean, that's it. He has to be force-fed this kind of propaganda, and he ate it hook, line, and sinker because, you know, it corresponds to his fucking worldview of being, like, a terrified monster that thinks that, like, the shadows are out to get him, that thinks that, like, black people want to come to his parents' house and fucking take it over and shit. Supreme Court set the way on abortion medication battle. This Florida. one is huge. There's already an update on this, right? Yeah, the Supreme Court briefly has restored the broad availability of the abortion pill. A temporary stay on the appeals court ruling is meant to preserve the status quo while the justices study the case, and it did not forecast how they would ultimately rule. This case is fucking bananas, okay? I don't know what is going on internally within the Republican Party because they're just, like, capitulating to some of the most unhinged, psychotic, ultra-Christian, ultra-nationalist fundamentalists within their base. This is is going to further radicalize people across the board, okay? The idea that you would ban Mifepristone using the Comstock Act, uh, Act, like, because it's a matter of indecency, is insane, okay? It also would set the precedent that any medication that people find indecent would be, you know, pulled off the market for any particular reason. The drug has been FDA approved since the year 2000. Yeah, it's also beyond, uh, I think, the statute of limitation for things of that nature. But uh, Justice Samuel A. Alito Jr. issued a temporary stay on Friday, ensuring that the common abortion pill would remain widely available while the Supreme Court decides whether to grant a formal stay. The interim stay will expire at midnight on uh, Wednesday. Such a stay is meant to preserve the status quo while the justices study the briefs and lower court ruling. It has been said before, but it bears repeating, if men could get pregnant, abortion will be a sacrament. This is a good point, and it's a it's almost a played out point, but, you know, it's true. It is it is accurate, and the same goes for fucking Viagra, uh, and the same goes for, the same is the proof of why Viagra will never be uh, regulated in a similar way. Um, and it's also uh, the, the, the same principle behind why there's even a conversation around banning mifepristone. Florida is the latest state to approve severe restrictions on abortion access. Republican Governor Ron DeSantis signed a bill to establish a six-week limit on abortions if the state's current 15-week law is upheld in court. Meanwhile, the Biden administration wants the Supreme Court to get involved in a legal challenge to a commonly used abortion pill. Women in Florida, the nation's third most populous state, will now only be able to get abortions within the first six weeks after conception, a point at which many women still don't even know they're pregnant. Florida now joins the ranks of a dozen Republican-led states that have enacted near-total bans on abortion in the 10 months since the Supreme Court undid nearly 50 years of federal protections. In Texas, Republicans are pushing to block websites that provide information about abortions. Just this month, Idaho made it a felony to help a minor get an abortion out of state. Hell yeah, dude. I mean, these guys love free speech. Remember, they love free speech. They love limited government. They love small government. Oh, wait, they don't. They fucking literally love the opposite, okay? Now, several Democrat-led states are stockpiling abortion medication. Conservative federal appeals court panel imposed new restrictions Wednesday on access to the abortion drug Mifepristone, blocking mail delivery of the pill, shrinking the the window in which women can take the medication from 10 weeks down to seven and requiring in yeah this shit was crazy too like they they also the federal appears uh, appeals court literally was like oh yeah we're gonna defend it by literally still further limiting it it's like why the fuck are you doing that i think what you're gonna have to do is just fucking literally say no uh nope doesn't matter to me i don't give a fuck just you know, break the law. Uh, if you're a blue state, you just violate it. You violate it. You you fund mechanisms to, to be able to, like, distribute it into red states. Do some crime. I mean, I think that it's it's ridiculous. What are they going to do? Have a fucking civil war over Mifepristone? Especially when, like, there is literally no support for it. And, uh, and the federal government in this circumstance would be on the side of defending Mifepristone. We know what happened last time, dude. Fuck that shit. If Gavin Newsom genuinely wants to be president, okay, he's going to have to do a little bit more than just quaffing his fucking hair and having sex with every constituent's wife and mom at the same time, okay? Have boats on the coast of Florida providing abortion and abortion pills? No, not even that. No, just straight up fucking send Mifepristone into Florida. What are they going to do? Let's say they try to arrest you, right? Uh, good luck. Defend them.
上太阳，红呀红彤彤哎，心中的太阳是妈。